Fertility Preservation in Pediatric Female Cancer Patients. The estimated number of children being diagnosed with cancer in the United States is approximately 15,780 per year. This incidence has been increasing at a rate of 0.6% annually. The number of pediatric cancer survivors is currently estimated to be 380,000. Improvements in cancer survival have brought to attention the harmful effects of cancer treatments on a woman's reproductive life and fertility. Preservation of fertility in pediatric female patient population diagnosed with cancer can be very challenging. Standard options endorsed by the American Society of Reproductive Medicine, including oocyte and embryo cryopreservation, may be difficult to perform in this age group, as controlled ovarian hyperstimulation is challenging in these patients due to the lack of adequate ovarian response. Cryopreservation of ovarian tissue is currently an available emerging fertility preservation option for children and prepubertal females diagnosed with cancer. Ovarian freezing has been demonstrated as a safe and feasible procedure in multiple case series. Ovarian tissue cryopreservation is currently an experimental option. A total of 86 live births have been reported with nine ongoing pregnancies. Ovarian cortical tissue containing primordial follicles is harvested prior to initiation of cancer treatment. Ovarian tissue harvesting can be performed laparoscopically or via mini laparotomy. It can involve a complete oophorectomy versus removing a portion of the ovary, also known as ovarian decortication. Ovarian cortex containing follicles is then sliced into strips of ovarian tissue. Patients at high risk for ovarian failure and pediatric patients with a small size of ovary are usually advised to undergo an oophorectomy to maximize their fertility potential. Ovarian tissue is then carefully cryopreserved by slow freezing or vitrification until proper timing for future ovarian reimplantation after completion of cancer treatment. Optimal reimplantation site for ovarian tissue is yet to be determined. At this time, two major autotransplantation techniques are available. In patients with ovarian medulla present, pieces of cortical ovarian tissue can be fixed to the medulla after thawing. In patients without an ovary, post oophorectomy, a peritoneal window can be created where pieces of ovarian tissue will be transferred as presented here. The following video represents case of a six-year-old female pediatric patient diagnosed with aplastic anemia preparing to undergo bone marrow transplantation. Prior to undergoing bone marrow transplant surgery, the patient was scheduled for port placement for chemotherapy and laparoscopic oophorectomy was also scheduled at the same time to collect ovarian tissue for cryopreservation. This option was discussed with the parents of the patient under our approved tissue registry to bank ovarian tissue. After making a small infraumbilical skin incision, an insertion of the 5 mm optical trocar, the scope is introduced. Two additional laparoscopic trocars are then placed under direct visualization. After performing a thorough survey of the abdominal and pelvic cavities, the uterus and bilateral ovaries were identified, and both ovaries appeared to be normal. Identifying the uterus and the ovaries can sometimes be challenging in pediatric patient population due to their small size. Decision was then made to perform a right-sided oophorectomy due to larger size of the right ovary and the ease of removal in this case. After identifying the right ureter, and following its course in the retroperitoneal area, the right ovary was grasped and gently separated from the ovarian vessels and the fallopian tube. After complete separation of the ovary, the umbilical port was enlarged to a 12 mm port to allow for a removal of the ovary. The ovary was then gently pulled out through the umbilical port. 
the entire abdominal cavity was evaluated and complete hemostasis was noted. The ovary was then decorticated on a side table in the OR. Ovarian cortex was divided into strips measuring approximately one centimeter in length, five millimeters width, and one to two millimeters in thickness. These pieces of ovarian tissue are then transported to the lab in media. These ovarian strips were then cryopreserved by vitrification technique. In summary, recent advances in treatment of childhood cancers have changed focus from survival alone to potential for preserving future fertility. Ovarian tissue cryopreservation represents the greatest potential opportunity for fertility preservation in pediatric and prepubertal female patients. Ovarian tissue freezing is a relatively new procedure within the area of assisted reproductive technology. It involves surgical ovarian tissue harvesting followed by freezing of strips of ovarian tissue. Ovarian autotransplantation is currently the only option to utilize the stored ovarian tissue. The present data increasingly supports the safety and efficacy of ovarian tissue cryopreservation as a fertility preservation option for pediatric patients. Although significant progress has been made, ovarian tissue harvesting and cryopreservation should be discussed with families of these children with a caveat that further research milestones are required. This novel technique has the potential to soon become an established fertility preservation option, and it is therefore strongly believed that ovarian tissue freezing should be implemented in all cancer centers to prevent from the harmful effects of gonadotoxic treatments, especially in pediatric and prepubertal female patients with limited reproductive options.